the 25th of August. I'm Dana Durnford. I hope you're doing good on this Thursday night of evil news. Why is nuclear so evil? There's no checks and balances. Dana, there's no incentive not to be evil. At the head of the evil is the IAEA. Shocking what a betrayal that turned out to be. And it's no surprise what a betrayal that turned out to be. Atoms for Humanity. The A-10 Warthog only shoots dirty bombs. Uh, Fukushima's like eating a banana and walking in sunshine and flying out of an airplane. That should be a crime to say any of them. And because it's such an egregious betrayal, it should be like a 30-year jail sentence for saying that. Oh, God. So we got a poll tonight. This is amazing. This is stunning. Is the current uranium bull market, which is an upswing, a scam like every other bull market since Fukushima nuclear meltdowns in 2011? And of course, the answer is yes, because we've covered it maybe a thousand times in the last 10 years. Uh, it's more than that. And what the market does regularly is it artificially creates um, a headline. Like, so Japan said that they're going to do a study on feasibility of nuclear power, which means it could take a year or two to do the study. If they decide that they're going to build more plants, you're looking at 15 or 20 years. So if you're planning on tying your money up in uranium stocks for 15 or 20 years on a pipe dream, you're, you've been sucked in really bad by this industry. And they do this over and over to the vulnerable of society, people that are retiring or about to retire, and sweet talk them into investing on the drop of a hat into these volatile stocks. And we, we've seen this. The Globe and Mail from Vancouver, British Columbia, does it three times a week, every week, pretending Fukushima didn't happen and that uh, stocks were going to go up. They were artificially... Uh, after 10 years, the artificially did go up by Sprout Investments in Ontario, which was created. It bought physical uranium and artificially created a demand by doing that, see? And then so stocks, uh, they were able to talk investors into buying into uranium. And so it lasts, it typically lasts for about... Uh, four days to two weeks, depending on how many people invest. But then the bottom will fall out because people stop investing. And then before, just before that, the people that created the nuclear industry, the stock markets, had bought their stocks cheap. Now they'll sell their stocks at prime price. A couple of days later, it'll flatline. Prices will dive. Investors will panic. These... Um, the stock market will buy up the stocks again for pennies and they'll repeat and rinse and cycle it every two weeks. They've been doing this for 10 years. And so they're fleeching, I would imagine, tens of millions of people in the last decade with uranium stocks. It, it, there, it should be the death penalty for what they're doing. They're destroying millions and millions and millions of people that have worked their whole lives stealing their investments through fake bull market uranium stocks and there's no checks and balances and there's no way to get your money back the right thing to do is ignore it totally uh, ura the uranium industry is a dead it's a dead stick right uranium shares rise as Japan hit hints uh, so if you hint that there's no reason for people to go investing, the only people that are going to invest in uranium stocks 
are people who don't know any better that were sucked in by propaganda that very day. It's outrageous. It's unbelievable that this is happening. It's unbelievable. And because there's no checks and balances, there's no incentive not to be evil, they've grown incredibly evil and they rinse and recycle it every two weeks. So the Japan Prime Minister, what he actually said was he was going to commission a study on the feasibility. He never said nothing about building reactors. He never said nothing about a renaissance in Japan. They got to get the permission of the Japanese people before they can have a renaissance of nuclear in Japan. That's not happening. It, it doesn't, it's not going to happen. CAMCO, which is a Canadian degenerate organization, um, great outlook, but too much of a future. Now, this is seeking alpha. These, if there was a death penalty in Canada, those people would qualify for it. CAMCO, great outlook, but too much of a future growth is already priced in. CAMCO hired 800 people this year, or 600. They're going to hire another 200 before, uh, I think, next month or month after, which would bring them up to 800 people for their uranium mine. And what happened, again, was Sprout Physical Trust in Ontario had got a billion dollars thrown at them. They bought up the physical uranium. And so there's no renaissance. There's the current reactors, and they're closing them left, right, and center. The uranium sector has been undersupplied for years. Yeah, exactly two years, is it? Since uh, Sprout Uranium Trust uh, was created by the industry to artificially inflate the stocks, and now they're using this as a weapon to bludgeon the vulnerable people out of their life savings. Market bearing, beating returns just seem unlikely, which is 100% correct. A little late to the party. The party was just at one instance where it is, because like the stocks have went, you need $60 a pound to break even for the mines. They're nowhere near it now, right? They're, they're, it's not you got to get way above that to make a profit. And because of inflation, now you need like an $80 baseline or something, right? Because they're gone nuts. They're literally nuts at this stage. And so what they're doing is they bought all these stocks cheap, and um, you got a war going on at a nuclear power plant where they're firing artillery from a friggin' nuclear plant. If that finally melts down because it went offline today, it lost uh, external power. And uh, they got they got it back online, apparently. If that melts down anywhere in the, near, in the future, the, you're going to see a big hole in the stocks for at least another 20 years. By then, the renewable industry will curb stomp the nuclear industry. Australia's Paladin Energy jumped on uranium demand hopes. No, no, this was artificially inflated by the media up in Australia. And Paladin went broke, uh, went bankrupt a couple of years, uh, 2017, I think it was. We covered it, but uh, can I find it? Probably. That's the most pathetic part of this story. Let me see if I can find it. Hopefully I don't. <laughs> it's an inside joke. Because if I find it, it proves I'm pathetic, that's all. Uh, yeah, I'm pathetic. Paladin Energy crashes and files for insolvency. It actually got $600 million a couple of months before that from the Australian government, and it still went bankrupt. It stole the money just before it went bankrupt, see? It had to kick back to the politicians. So we're, well, and we're seeing this worldwide. The, the uranium stocks are jumping 7 to uh, 15%. These are extraordinary jumps for something that's not tangible. It's a, it's a total... 
It's total robbery of the investors. I put an article up on the nuclearproctologist.org a few hours ago to help articulate it. Uh, they surged to their highest price since April. Because uh, they've been doing they, they've been doing this for the last two years, hardcore. For the last 11 years, they've been doing it, but not getting the investors to bite like they were hoping and not getting the returns, right? But the day they announced uh, I was guilty in the media worldwide, the next day, uranium flatlined at the lowest it's ever been, I think. I can't remember what it was, $17 a pound or something. And it stayed there for like three years. I was out on a research expedition, and we discovered an extinction event. And when we came ashore, they, they jacked me late at night. No sirens, no nothing. Come up and knock, 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 real slow on my door. And they just wanted to put gag orders against me. Uh, but um, it was a slap suit where they dragged me into a different jurisdiction 15 times. You had to take two ferries, you had to get a hotel room, huge amount of fuel and food and travel expenses. They were trying to bankrupt me. And we tried 16 lawyers, no lawyer would take the case. We even had the Bar Association appoint a lawyer, he didn't show up. Uh, will Israel's stealth F-35I either be able to strike Iran? I think the big question is, will Iran strike Israel? <coughs> Iran's got like 8 million people in their army. So uh, Israel's been flying sorties into Iran territory. And what they're basically doing when they're doing that is they're hoping Iran is going to light up their defense mechanism so Israel can pinpoint them for target later, right? Nuclear Project secures millions in funding. Millions in funding is nothing. It's irrelevant amount of money when it comes to the nuclear industry. It's, it's literally nothing when it comes to the nuclear industry. Terror power will build this natrium demonstration reactor. Demonstration. So they build the demonstration uh, reactors. These are small, alleged small modular reactors. And that could take them 10 years. They got to get the kinks out of it because it's a demonstration reactor. Then they got to re-engineer it. That takes several years. And then they got to build the new engineered reactor to spec to make sure that that don't uh, exterminate the species that will be left, hopefully, on the planet. The species will be left. So it's a coal plant. Why not just drill down and tap into geothermal and get rid of the coal and just keep the infrastructure? Bill Gates, who, who never, like, he's never, he's not at the company. He's not helped designing reactors. Blah, blah. He just lent his name to it. Because you got to do that when you're in that position, right? You got to come out, get on one knee, and kiss the ring of the nuclear industry, so to speak. Japan's prime minister set to order new nuclear power plant construction. That's a total uh, disparage from the actual facts. All he done was said we're going to do a study. We're going to have some academics look into the feasibility of building small modular reactors in the future. And all the media, not all of it, but 80, 85% of it, all of them come out and covered it and blew it out of proportion. But 85% of the media claimed they were actually just going to be a nuclear renaissance. And you can't do it without the consent of the population. And they're not getting the consent of the population. Chernobyl waste processing operations resume. Uh, they're mixing nuclear waste and cement because there's no checks and balances down there. The first batch of waste from the plant was for disposal was transferred on the 21st of August. They're in a war zone. 
and they're doing that. The ministry is actually insane, right? They're actually insane. And Chernobyl, of course, they're claiming it's the world's worst accident. Yeah, I'm confused by what I'm seeing right there. Because you see, there should be a river, right? But the rivers shouldn't have been blocked off. And I can't reconcile what I'm seeing. So this, that's uh, something else that I'm obviously got to look into deeper. In addition, we don't see that picture from that angle very often, maybe once a, uh, every 10 years or something. In addition, the Chernobyl plant is negotiated with a supplier of cement needed for the liquid radioactive waste. So they're going to encase... So putting nuclear waste and cement, it's still going to get bombarded with neutrons. It's still become brittle and fragile shortly, well, shorter than later because it's in contact. There is no checks and balances. Danny, you should be thankful to doing anything. I hear you, man. It looks like I left a headline out of this story. It starts right here. The University of Arkansas just received $3.4 million in funding. Now, $3.4 million. Now, they're going to look. They're going to study acute and delayed injuries caused by full-body radiation exposure from a nuclear accident or bioterrorism. They're the terrorists. The nuclear industry is the only terrorist out there that uses radiation as a weapon. And it's also used in your hospitals as a weapon. Hide your beagle puppies and dogs, folks, because they'll be coming for them. A five-year study at $3.4 million. Uh, this place uh, employs 11,000 people. So at $120,000 average, 11,000 people at 120,000 is 1.3 billion a year in wages. And so 4.3, it's actually supposed to be 3.4 million, is you won't know it's missing out of the big picture, right? So they say they're going to look at a five year study because the FDA has proved some drugs to alleviate bone marrow injuries in people exposed to radiation because it destroys the, the stem cells in your bone marrow. And, you know, what a moral place would do, f first off, it wouldn't use radiation on you. But if it does, it'll take, it'll harvest your stem cells. And then if you survive and start to recover, they'll put the stem cells back in your bones. Uh, you shouldn't use radiation on anything with replicating cells because it kills them. No drugs are available to treat the adverse effects in other organ systems. I've done whole presentations on uh, radiation injuries from hospitals. It wrecks all your organs. Uh, I got something here to help you understand it, hopefully. <sighs> Let me see if I can f get this right. So... There was a study there was a study that I'm missing in my list here. Hang on, I'll get it.
nuclear is so evil it just defies any kind of logic whatsoever how come judges ain't subpoena these people so the original conclusion based on facts 1985 study was validated with a repeat of the study in 2004 that chemotherapy had a 3% efficiency. 3% is the typical misdiagnosis, wrong diagnosis, uh, that you d actually didn't even have cancer. Where's it to? So it showed that 2.3% in Australia and 2.1% in the United States would live longer than five years with radiation chemo. And so the conclusion was, why are we doing this to humans? Why are we murdering humans with chemotherapy? And then also... Um, let me see if I can find a... It's safe to say we have actually lost ground. And 3% in 1985 was horrific. And all the research dollars resulted in a negative 33% further decrease in benefits. So they suggested you don't take it, you have a 50% chance that way of surviving rather than take chemotherapy. Chem chemotherapy basically is a death sentence. That's what the study showed. And so I hope these people, because there's a thousand just like them, unfortunately, their job was to allegedly come up with drugs to help you survive the irradiation rather than um, come up with solutions. Like the studies on DCA were astonishing, right? A 70% reduction in large solid tumors in the first three weeks, which meant you didn't need invasive surgery. And that was at 25 milligrams per kilogram. That's the a pure DCA. You can actually get it at Amazon.com. Demand for iodine for the purpose of protection against nuclear radiation next to Ukraine. Some European countries has in uh, demand for useless iodine tablets has increased. Well, I mean, so iodine goes, you know, the, here's the, the theory, right? Is iodine... Um, is attracted to your thyroid but because of the way your body works it treats it like potassium and once it goes in your thyroid it's not thyroid cancer you got to worry about you got to worry about the iodine because iodine what that happens to natural iodine harmless iodine uh, is it's turned into a hormone and they're distributed throughout your body but also three also to your other glands right because they store these uh, hormones and so now you're going to saturate your body with radioactive hormones uh, and that's brutal effect but what they tell you it is to avoid radiation sequestering in your body of course that's illogical because the radiation has to be in your body to get to your thyroid so it's just going to sequester your muscles your organs and your bones and it's going to radiate pulse energy every second. Your body's going to attack your white blood cells every second for the rest of your life trying to build a tumor around it. And so you have less red blood cells than white blood cells and more white blood cells. They call that leukemia. That's what radiation does to you in a hospital. It gives you leukemia. Dietary supplements for the purpose cannot help since they contain small amounts of active substances. So they're talking about it getting your iodine from seaweed or whatever the case may be. Not that you'll ever get me to eat seaweed because of uh, the way it attracts man-made. Uh, you know, cesium will go into the thyroid too, not just iodine. 
The point of potassium iodine is a medicine used to prevent the intake of radioactive iodine in the thyroid glands of newborns, children, adolescents, and adults up to 40 years of age. And they studied this like you can't even conceive. Uh, if you live within 100 miles of a nuclear power plant, you, you need to sell it. You're being poisoned all the time. Japan eyes returned to nuclear power more than a decade after Fukushima. Justin McCurry in Tokyo, who, who should obviously know better, is in Tokyo. And uh, pictures come out recently of the tanks are missing. And so now a lot of the stories are got filled up with pictures of tanks to try to get the population that might have caught wind of what's really going on. Like, so if either one of these tanks within a square mile is full of the water that we're talking about, you're spraying over a reactor core, you're, you're talking several sievers per liter. Three sievers is a lethal dose. And so the tanks would be 1.4 million sievers of just beta. You'd probably equal in gamma, alpha, and neutrons, obviously, or triple. Which means you can't get on the site again, let alone build another tank there. The fact that the tank exists is proof that they're not full. And that they had 1,000 tanks in 2013, and 1,000 tanks all the way up until 2022. So how many tanks did they actually build and fill up? None. And tanks were created to trick you into thinking they didn't kill the Pacific or, or wasn't harming the ocean. That It was strictly a public relation move. That's all it is. The tanks were just bolted together. They don't have the integrity to fill them up. And so they can't keep the lie alive forever, so they got to get rid of the tanks. And because, and another telltale sign is they're unwilling to let anybody independently test the tanks because the tanks will be just natural water if there's water in it at all. And, um, and you got to realize a lot of people going through this place. So how do you keep the lie alive year after year? Well, you can't, right? So claiming that they can't do nothing only dump it into the ocean doesn't, uh, resonate f when you for scrut when you scrutinize it, and claiming that they filter the water is ludicrous because you're talking a couple of sievers per liter. D and on top of that, of course, you can't get into the water filtration system. But we, you know, if you go through my playlist, I have presentations just on the tanks, the 2022 uh, pl presentations, where I show you the documentation proven beyond any shot of a doubt that uh, a Riva system didn't work even in 2014, that the ALP systems didn't, filtration systems for water, simply didn't work. It doesn't work anywhere else on the planet. It ain't going to work at a nuclear meltdown. And that the Siri system for the cesium, that didn't, that can't work. You can't, you're talking within a few hours, thousands and thousands of sieverts in a skinny filter. It's absurd. The, the whole story is just absurd. Because water that goes through a filter with many sieverts comes out many sieverts. So if you're putting in two, you're going to come out at 10 and 15 on the other end. Uh, the industry is insane. And I have to keep the candles burning so that the world has an opportunity to wake up. It most likely won't, but we have to try. And so I have sacrificed the rest of my life and my life to keeping the story straight and being honest, uh, which is a pretty difficult thing to do in this particular industry. Can Japan, because they tell so many lies, um, you can't do anything quick, right? I got some videos from today. I'll show at the end. Can Japan, uh, say that picture so I don't forget. 
Can Japan learn to love nuclear power again? Bloomberg. Can can Bloomberg drop dead? The government is back in the constructions of new reactors. F like It just shows up out of nowhere and they start making all of these all of these salacious headlines and they don't there's no evidence to suggest any of this is true. And then so the stock market just exploded because this showed up everywhere. This was organized, this is on purpose. And so anybody that's running the story have stocks in uranium or are getting a chunk of the pie. There's no other reason for everybody right around the world to come out and do this in the last 48 hours. It has to be coordinated because it's complete deceit. You will have to convince the skeptical public first. So in other words, there is no renaissance. Japan reverses course on post-Fukushima nuclear ban without the consent of the population is is just simply not true, right? But the, the media doesn't care. That's what it does. It tells lies. That's how it survives. It doesn't actually tell the lie. Uh, the nuclear industry writes the story, gives it to the media. The media puts their journalist's name on it and pumps it out to their audience of fluff. And that's how it's done, right? The lobbyists are who's paying the bills. Prime Minister says a shuttered plant can reopen. Fresh reactors will be built. All ones are getting their lives extended. This is simply fake. You know, last year there was uh, 333 nuclear power plants where the renewables came online in 12 months. By 2026, between 2020 and 2020, 2026, they estimated there was going to be another total of uh, 4,800 gigawatts online of new re of renewables. That's equal to 5,500 large nuclear power plants in just six years. The only thing holding renewable back for the last 20 years was storage. And uh, nobody's allowed to have any storage unless it's batteries, and batteries will never work. Of course, you can do battery pond, battery uh, or water batteries where you have two reservoirs. You fill them up with water and extra energy, pump water up a hill. When you need extra energy, let the water come down to the next reservoir. But probably the best one is, and there's many out there, by the way, but probably one of the better ones, I think, of course, is geothermal. Just dig down to the earth, hit a thousand degree Fahrenheit temperatures, and remove the coal, oil, and gas structures out of the facilities, and just leave the infrastructure running on geothermal. But uh, compressed air storage, where you dig mine shaft tunnels, we actually have that technology. It's a joke, by the way, sarcasm. And what well, we do, act right. And so I only said that for the nuclear industry because they're extremely gullible. And so if you dig mine shafts and compress air down there, you can run the biggest cities on the planet with peak power from compressed air storage. And if you use the two of those, but like uh, ideally what they should have been doing was geothermal and tidal energy because they're 24 hours a day and they're predictable for thousands of years. Uh, back that up with wind and solar and with storage like compressed air and water batteries. Japan's considering developing a new nuclear reactor, the degenerate, despicable, coward globe and mail, the revolting, hideous globe and mail. And who's the boy? Mari Yamaguchi. Mari Yamaguchi. From the Associate Press. That's why it showed up everywhere. Because they have 1,600 medias with spider bots will automatically aggregate that story, the same pictures, same paragraphs, but the same authors at the same time worldwide. And then all those medias have subsidies that will pump out the same story.
That's what we're seeing, right? We are seeing some small variations in the actual stories themselves. The headlines are different. Mary Yamaguchi, of course, that's, when you see that, that's the cover story. Anything by Mary Yamaguchi is going to be the cover, the official cover story. Somehow she's tasked with that. I um, went to her Twitter account there last month and called her a monster. They blocked me, of course, right away. Japan wants to build nuclear plants again. Uh, again, you see these variations? Again, they're showing tanks in the background. But this this particular uh, video, they're, they're allegedly holding water from the tank. And it's filtered so good that... Uh, I got it there somewhere. One politician, the media was goading him to drink it, and he eventually he was gonna drink it, and he was like, he's like this, and then he puts the glass down, and won't drink it, and the media all jeered. Today, only five out of Japan's sixty reactors are in operation. Five of Japan's opera, uh, reactors are in operation. The this is the control room at Fukushima nuclear power plant. They couldn't go in there for seven years. The control room, which is quite a ways away from the reactors. But yet they claim they went into the nuclear meltdown and got the fuel out of the pools that are decades of reactor cores out of fuel pools that don't even exist anymore. Yet they couldn't even go into the control room, which has nothing to do with the actual... This is the industry. It's... Uh, Kooky as it gets. Safety assessment for research reactors. What they learned about, because this is from the International Atomic Energy Agency, it's hard, it's hard to appreciate how much I actually hate those people. Uh, they're part of UN, right? They're UN's little pulpit, uh, along with UNSCLEAR and ERP and the ICPP and the rest of them which are all UN organizations, by the way. This is the military-industrial complex. That's who UN is, 195 militaries. And they want you to pay 54 uh, sterlings to go read it. So the safety is what, what we can prove uh, with academic studies is even research reactors within... Uh, I'm not sure what the radius is, within, say, 50 miles, it actually changes the sex ratios of males and females to more males and females. <coughs> uh, right? There's that discrepancy shows up, which means there's less people being born. And so when you have an accident, you expect that to happen to the whole planet and to all species, not just humans. But we see that around France's uh, research reactors, Germany research reactors, studies, and we've covered that. Robot issue delays fuel removal from Fukushima nuclear plant. Again, this is a, a blatant lie. The, the robot is only supposed to, which is not even a robot, it's a robotic arm built by uh, Sellafield, United Kingdom's Britain company, built this stupid, and uh, I'll show it to you later on here, this stupid unfolding arm. It was designed to get samples of the reactor core inside a reactor 2. Because they're trying to pretend that re reactor 2 just it melted down, but it stayed in the containment, which is absurd because it hits 9,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures. But we know it burnt continuously inside the building for several days. And again, Mary Yamaguchi. She only shows up for certain stories, which are obviously the cover stories. The robot is not going to be trying to pull the fuel out of the reactors. It's an absurd suggestion. I'll show, I'll show you the video later. We counted the tanks, by the way. There's only 720. But the pictures that came out, and I covered them a few days ago, when you when it looks in beyond reactor three and four, you can't see any tanks, and it was one of the very few that actually showed 
that actually showed, hang on here, uh, reactor five and six. And I think it's probably the only example of a picture that shows all the reactors at the one time. That, and uh, I, I, I don't even, I wouldn't even try to guess how many pictures I actually got. It's, it's an absurd amount. Okay, so in, that's re the remains of reactor four, the remains of reactor three. Right behind reactor four, and I, I, I zoomed out on this picture so you can see the water. That's the pump house. <coughs> What's the cranes doing at the pump house? I can't figure that out. But anyway, uh, behind reactor four is the common spent fuel pool. Well, it was. Uh, pictures that were released last year in January, all these reactors and the common spent fuel pool in reactor 6 also and the pump house and the stack at reactor 6 were all redacted in 731 pictures that were originally taken. They released it on, I'm sorry, on the, yeah, on the 10th anniversary, March the 20th, uh, March 11th, 2020. 2021. <coughs> the pictures came out in January of last year. And so you can see how low the common spent fuel pool was. This, uh, hang on, I'll show you. Otherwise, you're going to call me a lawyer. Not you folks, but somebody out there in the industry will say, why didn't Dana show the picture? He, he always shows the picture. He never showed you the picture because it was lying. <laughs> Liar. The industry's, uh, nuclear industry, people work for it. It's hard. It's hard. If you had to prove that they're human, you'd be in trouble. Hang on. Oh, I, got it, I got it. I got it. I got it. It's almost here. My big problem is uh, I'm a hoarder for information. <laughs> and everything has a spot where it belongs. Okay. It's a difficult story to tell, right? First off, I kind of want to draw you a picture. 680 kilometers of the coastline looked like that after after that went through. This is the nuclear power plant site. This is right by reactor 4 and the common spent fuel pool. So this is what it would look like at the common spent fuel pool. And so there's no way that survived. And the common spent fuel pool is where they put uh, reactor cores from all six reactors on site. Uh, I screwed up. Hang on. So you can see he's able to stand up in that water. He would have died anyway for sure. That poor person would have. So imagine this water. You're talking 30 to 40 feet deep. But these waves, this is where the waves came in. and f So the first wave came in and flooded the site. They're traveling at 700 kilometers an hour. The next wave comes in, it doesn't have the same resistance, right? And so the common spent fuel pool is almost at water height level. It got washed away, folks. They just, uh, they managed to cover it up. But in the pictures we got recent, uh, those tanks are missing. They've already dumped the tanks per se. Robots issue delay fuel removal from Fukushima nuclear plant. Mariette Gucci. If she sees her name, it's a bad sign, folks. Robot issues delayed again. And um, Associate Press, as you scroll down, Mariette Gucci. Same picture, same paragraphs, but the same authors worldwide at the same time. That's how they do it, right? And, but, and so if you come here, you'll get, this is the only time you're going to get another narrative. And you're going to get it with the documentation. 
And you're not going to get speculation. That's extremely rare that I'll speculate on anything. If I can't 100% unequivocally quantify what I'm going to say, I won't say it. Because I run an educational program and can't educate people on speculation. And if someone calls in and asks me to speculate, I might speculate. But uh, I... I've been at this for so long and I have so much material and I'm, I'm a good problem solver when it comes to this stuff and so I, I'm able to articulate what the whole issue actually is 100% uh, of the times and if I can't I won't I won't right I'll come out I'll be point blank about it and that's how you get here, as you be honest, right? TEPCO to again postpone start of nuclear fuel debris removal at Fukushima plant. So this is the video where they're going to show you the arm? Yeah. Let's put that on the big screen. The big screen. Where's Dana? There you go. Let's get her going here. So this was a video, and you can tell he's a doorknob. Well, he probably can't even change a doorknob. But you can tell these are not very bright people. So there's the robotic arm. And it's got one trick, basically. It unfolds. <laughs> you really think they're going to dismantle a reactor core with this, folks, like the media has been claiming for several days now? You really think they're going to use that and pick up each of the reactor cores is 720 tons. There was also decades of reactor cores at the top of the building and fuel pools. That was lost, too. Do you really think that that little head of the arm is going to dismantle reactors that are still melting down? But that's what, that's what the official story from the scumbag media actually is. Again, delays work to remove the fuel debris. That so-called robotic arm was only the original story is the real story it was meant to get samples uh, the robot's not going to survive more than a couple of minutes in that environment down in the reactor core it's going to whatever the remains are it's going to be tens of thousands of sievers the electronics can't survive there not only that, when you bring that robotic arm back up, that's going to be hundreds of sieverts. You can't get in the building. So this is off-site where they're doing this. This is a mock-up of Fukushima where they're, they take their equipment and try it out. And they, that's where the media will go and shoot the fake videos too, by the way. It's ludicrous to suggest that you can utilize it because once you turn it on and put it in the fuel core, you can never get near it again. You can't repair it. You can't replace it. You, you, that's a lethal dose. You can't get near it again. The idea was to get some samples from the reactor core. It, once you use it, it's uh, disposable because it's lethal doses. And that was an interesting... Let me go back to that. Um... Well, right there, that's reactor 5 and 6, where my finger is pointed. And so that's extraordinary that we got, in just one week, we got two sets. But you can't clarify anything from that. It's not like a picture up closer. And so there's no containment around reactor 4. So this could have been a last year picture. Let me go back. Tepco says the postponement is due to need to fix problems with the British developed a remote control robotics arms. That can't... Uh, again, right? There's no way you can utilize this to remove the highly radioactive fuel debris. You can get sample, and that's what it's for. But the media is pretending officially initially planned to start the removal at number two reactor 
TEPCO, of course, was nationalized right away. It doesn't exist. It's a government entity because it was on the stock markets. Well, it's just par for course. It's the nuclear industry. If they don't lie, then the story won't get printed. The download, carbon capture, and Japan's nuclear U-turn. <laughs> Again, right? MIT, who's been promoting nuclear now for, this is 99 years, I think, they've been promoting nuclear. They're incredibly degenerate cowards. Uh, one thing you'll notice about MIT. Joe Biden uh, passed a so-called Inflation Reduction Act. Inflation caused by an embargo against Russia. Self-inflicted inflation. And now they're going to give themselves a billion dollars. Tens of billions of dollars in projects designed to capture carbon dioxide for greenhouses on Mars, I guess. Because carbon dioxide is not an issue on this planet. If there's no carbon dioxide, the planet would be completely barren. There would be no species whatsoever. Controversial climate items in the sweeping... Sp controversial... Japan will start using nuclear power again. Uh, they, they haven't got permission from the population to do it, so it's not going to happen. It's totally 100% unequivocal nonsense. New York Post. Man, these people are something else, say. Eh? Every time we cover them, they're like the weirdos. They're regurgitating the Associate Press story. Ukrainian fears run high over fighting near a nuclear plant. And yet there's a nuclear renaissance going on today, folks. That's, that's why they're claiming there's a nuclear renaissance, beca is because of Ukraine, right? Because people um, are hating nuclear heavily in the last four months. That normally would never mention the word. Home to the world's worst atomic accident in 1986 at Chernobyl. It's absurd to call Chernobyl a 200-ton graphite reactor worse than 720-ton pure uranium plutonium reactors in Japan. One of them was an actual mixed oxide fuel reactor, which is infinitely worse than a typical reactor. And so... You can't quantify this assertion that Chernobyl, but all the media worldwide knows to say that. Without exception, all media worldwide knows to say those exact words. Total coincidence, Dana. Why is Paladin, Australia's degenerate nuclear company's energy share prices rocketing 13% today? Yeah, that's a good question. There, there should be a, an inquiry on why that happened because there's no logic. It's strictly about fleecing the investors. It's strictly about robbing the investors. It's 100% unequivocally a deceit and deception. And it was orchestrated worldwide. We've been following, we do this all day, every day. We cover. Literally every story each day in the nuclear industry in a 24-hour cycle. And what we do is we cover the lies and the propagandas. In the last couple of days, it's, we got the artificial, again, this artificial inflation of uranium stocks. And that the only people that's going to buy into uranium stocks are on the spot people sucked in by the local medias. And they're, they, they're not at it because they're not succeeding. They're at it because they're really good at it, at robbing people of their life savings, which they'll lose in a few days' time when, when uh, stocks go crash again. Japan's government intends to reopen more nuclear reactors and build new ones. That's simply not what Japan didn't say that. There was no announcements, which the official announcements would have come Kushida... And now, if he had said it, all the media would have had him on the front page. It's 100% artificial inflation and robbing people. This is strictly robbing people. 
because Ukraine has given the nuclear industry such a black eye in the last four months, they're struggling, and because they're so evil, it's very predictable what we're seeing, right? Because you, the greed is. It's it's hard to appreciate how evil the people in the nuclear industry actually are, unless you're, if you join in or you come by on a regular basis. You get a refresher on how evil this industry is. It's absurd how evil, worldwide, symmetrically, this industry are, and and how much cowards they actually are. Like you got the World Nuclear News and uh, Nuclear Engineering Internationals. These are actually two lobbying groups for the nuclear industry. Are put on the pedestal by the the big browsers worldwide, but. Uh, they never, ever, not a single time, not in a, not in a friggin' single article, will you find the name of the author. Not a single time. Year after year, we've been covering them all year long, day after day. You'll never see them put their names on the articles. They don't want their children and family and friends reading it, probably. Uranium, the fuel for clean energy. This is Australia media. They, they're out in full despicable form today, I noticed. Uranium, the fuel for clean... Because Australia has a, um, a moratorium on uranium on nuclear power plants. And so the industry... Which is in Australia, nuclear industry, they're probably the worst worldwide of of industry, of uh, propaganda. Their propaganda is on a whole different level, eh? They're incredible, disgusting, and despicable. So Korea wins a two point five billion dollar order to build Egypt's first nuclear plant. E the only reason Egypt is building nuclear because it wants nuclear weapons down the road. Well, they, you know, they had Mubarak there for decades, and then they, uh, what they done to Mubarak was disgusting, the U.S. government, and then they replaced him with another dictator. They assassinated him ultimately, right? State Senate to hold Diablo Canyon hearing on Thursday. Dana and Asana was actually down to their last public hearing. Dana, you're going down for this one? You going to go down and do it again? It was, it was a brutal experience the last time, apparently. Camco Corporation stocks, why it increased over 15% today? Because you had all the goblin media worldwide out there Lying to the population. Totally fabricating stories. That's why. Uh, uranium stocks went up the day after Japan's prime minister. Kishida said that the country is going to restart its idle nuclear plants. It's got to get permission from the communities, and it ain't getting it. And the minute they try, the communities will all... Like chip in hundreds or thousands of dollars each, and they'll launch lawsuits against the companies and tie them up in courts for years and years. And that's exactly what we see. You can't just go in and bully them, because that's the legislation won't let them do it. See, and if you try to change it, it'll take a long time. So it's simply not. It's it's a hundred percent posturing. It's simply there's no there's no fact to anything they're saying. We can't find any factual documentation of what they're claiming. And if we can't find it, it doesn't exist. NTPC to develop two nuclear power plants as India a aims to shift to clean energy. So they're calling nuclear clean energy. Of course, India has streets full of children with lopsided heads and bodies just destroyed because you pour a lot of the nuclear waste into the main drinking water. It, it, what India does is disgusting. Yesterday we had a story where they had nuclear scientists, which are like celebrities down there, by the way, 
riding bicycles for 1,700 kilometers to promote uh, clean, green, too cheap to meters, safe nuclear power. And green is something, something we've been listening to for less than two months. The word green when it comes to nuclear. It's about two months ago they started, that word started showing up and now it's almost every paragraph, every story sometimes. Japan's nuclear about face. Again, this is simply not true. It's 100% not true. They're claiming that these homeless people are going into a, one of the melted reactors. Look. So you see the ground in the background? That color in the background is steel plates that are rusted. And so everything, you can't go into an area without putting steel plates down first because they had uh, fuel pellets land everywhere at this place. Uh, they're wearing paper suits. You can't go near, can't go into a nuclear meltdown, period. You can't go near it with paper suits. Like you're going to die that week or that day or that month. Google was targeted over ad emails again. So here's how that works is they're, they're on the stock market, which is it's not Google, it's actually Alphabet, right? But they have these, they're, they're like UN where they have all these subsidies companies. And Google's one of them. And so they're on the stock market, and if they break a law, nobody can be put in jail. All can happen, all that can happen is to get a fine. And they don't mind getting a fine because they're corporate personhood, which is an illegal amendment to the slavery laws, by the way, and which gives corporations some of the human rights, which was meant to give black people human rights, right? Jo Justin Hugo Black had wrote an eloquent dissent in the 30s, he was a Supreme Court justice at the time, of how absurd it was that amendment meant to free slaves from an oppressive government was being used by corporations to oppress the solvent people. And, which is a fantastic dissent and 100% accurate. Uh, so there's no incentive because the corporation can't be put in jail. And so because they're corporate personhood, they, don't, they put their money in offshore accounts where they don't pay taxes because that's good business. It's not, it's not patriotic, you know. They don't pay state, federal, local taxes. They put their money in offshore accounts, the taxes, are staying offshore so they don't pay them. So then if they do get a fine, the money that they didn't pay, they can take a piece of that and pay the fine. We call it, It's basically a kickback because they're always breaking laws. You can, but you can't put them in jail. So there's no incentive not to be evil. So Australia, which the government in Australia, the media, uh, is almost as evil as United Kingdom's government and media and um, universities, which have all been captured by this ridiculous nuclear industry in increments over decades. Why uranium stocks exploded at double digits today? Well, it, it didn't, right? We got a poll tonight to help you articulate it. Is the current uranium bull market a scam like every other one since Fukushima nuclear meltdown? And we got an overwhelming yes. Uh, well, I mean, like, I, I put that there just to have that question floating around on the video because that's... This is our, they artificially inflated it again. It was like 300, 400 times since 2011 that they artificially inflated it and robbed people by tricking them into investing in it because the bottom will fall out shortly within a few days. Here's how much the top performing uranium stocks had rallied at their highest points in the day up 18% for energy. Fuels, Denison's Mine, that's the Canadian, 18.2%. Your Energy, scumbag names to give these companies, eh? 17%. Uh, 
Uranium Energy is up 14%. Camco was up 13 And Next Generation Energy, Next Gen. And so you got all these, na these names. When you see a name like Next Generation or Your Energy, uh, these are incredible degenerates that are putting that name dear to suck people in. This could just be the beginning of a fresh bull run in uranium stocks. Now we hear we see that sentence every two weeks for eleven years. It's one of the biggest Ponzi scams we know of on the planet. It's been going on straight for eleven years, and the regulatory agencies for the stock market must be getting paid off or they're scared of the nuclear industry, probably. It's not an exaggeration when I say that this is one of the biggest developments in the nuclear industry in nearly a decade. Could be a turning point for the uranium industry is waited for. This, again, is a ludicrous assertion. It is an exaggeration. Threat of a nuclear catastrophe in Ukraine adds to global energy chaos. So again, right, uh, this is why you see the artificially inflating of the stocks, particularly today, is because this is happening. And if the bottom falls out and the people got these, they must be expecting a meltdown is probably what's going on. And they want to sell their shares, right? So they created an artificial inflation so all the journalists and academics who got stocks from kickbacks for lying for the industry can shake their stocks and walk away with a profit. And probably, so probably going to see a meltdown in Ukraine this week. I mean, they lost power today, for goodness sakes, in a war zone. Uh, my website now, I can put videos on my website, actually upload them to my website. That was kind of weird. So I uploaded five short videos today on to a article I wrote tonight. Um, so last night's video was an hour forty three eighteen. Hour forty three eighteen. So the last in the seconds was eighteen. How much did they screw us uh, from last night's video? 18, 19, 26. So, eight seconds longer. My video last night, after 12 hours, is eight seconds longer. So, if you don't watch my video within 12 hours, who knows what's happening? But the video is eight seconds longer. Does that make any sense to anybody? Exactly 12 hours later. My, I don't see that with anybody else's video, only my videos. So we got a poll tonight. Is the current uranium bull market a scam like the other four or 500 since Fukushima nuclear meltdowns? Yeah, of course it is, Dana. What are you asking, Dana? It's ridiculous. Of course it is. I know, I'm just trying. French power hit 900 euros as nuclear outages amplify the crisis. Yeah, nuclear is so carbon-free and green, the whole planet is uh, falling apart because of it. France got over half its fleet shut down because of corrosion and droughts. But now, because they, they got to import power from Germany and UK... They got import power from the UK and Germany. Hello, Ontario. Hello, this is Michael Hill. Uh, this is way off topic if you're here. Go, hang on, you're going live, are you? All right. Go ahead. So this is way off topic, but I took my Geiger counter to my food that I bought today, and uh, I tested eight vegetables and fruits and uh, the one that showed up yellow on my Geiger counter was a locally sourced organic product and I'm just wondering if you think that maybe it tested yellow because it was put on a shelf that had radioactivity in it. Was the shelf radioactive? 
Yes, this is what this is what I'm asking. <laughs> because otherwise, well, that, it makes that, no sense. that's that's true, right? So, like when I moved, I moved out of my other place a little while ago into this place, and uh, this place is completely renovated. All new ceilings, walls, floors, through the whole place, right? And my Geiger counter basically went down a hundred counts per minute. And the other place was was pre Fukushima. Um, I mean, that's a great point, right? Because they're putting radioactive food on the shelves, and some radiation stays behind, bioaccumulates. But no, what I, uh, like sadly, you're getting organic. So the industry is notorious for selling stuff and calling it organic when it's actually poison. And so it didn't well, do it. I, I wanted your opinion. Like uh, what I would do next time, if you get that, is go back and get food on other shelves close to it and see if you get a similar reading. I will try. Because um, if you don't, then you're that's poison food, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, you know, my friend. How do you explain that to the manager? The manager is just going to say, "Well, what do you think I'm going to do?" Well, um, that, that's that's the problem, isn't it? Well, like you say, like if you're, yeah. it, did, did this come from Japan? Did you start uh, off with no, that? No, it came from Ontario. Can't freak this scary. Uh, Canada first, first off lifted all restrictions on Japanese food, so it's not unusual to ship it and then switch, um, switch the name of where it came from. Right, that's standard practice with this industry. Japan's Holy Japan crap. lift yeah Japan lifted all restrictions after ninety three days or Canada did, and fifty five countries banned the food from fourteen prefectures not just Fukushima for ten years. And so they couldn't ship it anywhere but Canada. And they're not going to give up that uh, that um, cash cow, right? Was there anything else you'd like to throw no. out there? No, I just really appreciate, uh, you know, you doing what you're doing. And uh, I just really appreciate it. And thanks to everyone in chat. And uh, just, just, you know, I think you're great. I appreciate it, my friend. Thank you. Call in again with the next number, okay, and let us know. Yeah, thank you now. Yeah, that was a great call. I like calls like that. Not really, because... Uh, anything to do with radioactive food freaks me out. Well, because, you know, it's kill you. <laughs> uh, let me go back. The cost of French power jumped. Now, it's absurd expensive in France for electricity. UK just announced that uh, electricity bills in UK will be three to four times normal this winter. That should make you feel all warm and cozy inside. So France is going to have a brutal winter. There's going to be riots in France. France likes to riot, right? The surge is being driven by uh, EDF, which is France's government, actually, right? Announcement that... More of its reactors will take longer, which we talk about all the time, right? Like, it takes probably three to four years to fix the issue they're talking about. But they're not going to tell you that because they're on the stock market. and That'll drive the price straight down into the ground. So that's the problem with the industry. If it's on the stock market, they're going to lie to you. They're not allowed to tell you the truth, right? It may need to import electricity during long periods this winter. Oh, well, first off, uh, the heat wave is far from over in France. It's, I mean, it's far from over. If its neighbors have the capacity to provide it, yeah, well, Germany, United Kingdom is going to give it to France and they're going to drive up the prices for their own people because that's what scumbags do. On Friday, the UK regulator, non-regulatory agencies, is set to announce an increase in household bills to a level about three times last winter. Last winter was pretty brutal, right? This is going to be about three times worse than... So people will starve to death in the thousands this year in the United Kingdom. 
because you put your fate in the industry, nuclear industry, and the industry has no intentions of following through on their commitments. Yeah, that's crazy. Bad news. Russia held a nuclear plant disconnected from the Ukraine grid for the first time. Uh, well, appropriate thing to say there was, because that's writers, which is massive media, all kinds of medias regurgitate that. If Russia held a nuclear plant loses connection to the grid because of a fire burned down its supply lines because nuclear power plants need their own gas coal and oil plants and each two of them dedicated to it to build it to run it for its lifetime and for 60 years after so uh, I should have asked a caller who they were if they were in the comments section because they could be from the comments section right she love chat showed up. You're a little early night there, love chat. Come back at the end of the show like normal. Thank you, Dana. Let me keep going here. Uh, said fire broke out in the ash pits of a coal power station. Um and interfere with the power lines connected to the plant, connecting the power plant to the grid. So rather than say disconnect, they, they didn't disconnect, they were disconnected. I, I hate media. I actually hate them now after all these years of endless lies. I can honestly say it wouldn't be healthy for me to meet anybody in the media. They're going to have a bad friggin' day. And a spokesperson denied the diesel generators were switched on. Most media is reporting that it was. And apparently what they got is another diesel generator that provides power to the generators to switch them on. And he'd done that since Fukushima, apparently. And I don't know why I didn't think about it. But Nuclear back on the table in Japan and India sees uranium stocks rise. So... India also came out at the same time with a fake story as Japan did. And India said, well, we're going to roll ahead with nuclear. We're getting two more reactors. And the media utilized, there was a lot of stories. That was the precursor to the Japan story. There was a, probably 10 hours before Japan story broke. The world stands on a nuclear precipice, and we must avoid a catastrophe. In 1945, nuclear weapons killed 355,000 people in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. They, they downplay that number significantly, right? So it's, it's rare to see the real number. Nuclear Engineering International, which is a lobbying group, you won't see any authors' names on these stories, a new sense of urgency for new nuclear. Yeah, because they're on the precipice of going extinct themselves, right? Everybody hates nuclear. And so they have thousands of public relations firms out there pumping for them in the last four months in particular. With the evidence of a catastrophic impact of global warming, and global warming is caused by a nuclear industry, decades of releases to the environment, but this model is Fukushima radioactive fallout. So radiation has this gas, oil, and coal produces carbon, which plants and humans and animals and insects and birds and trees and bushes and everything needs to grow and survive, right? Uh, but nuclear releases uh, plumes all day from over a thousand fuel pools worldwide for starters folks and they're still split in the atom but this model is from Fukushima and after uh, 19 days radiation covers the entire planet and that's for life uh, the plume doesn't stop after 19 days by the way 
the model does, it's pulsing energy almost at the speed of light every second. Invisible plumes covering the entire planet planet from the bottom of the ocean floor to the upper troposphere into the stratosphere. Commissioning of the Philippine research reactor is on their way. Again, uh, the research reactors are showing um, are showing um, population impacts where there's more males born than females within the uh, area around the nuclear power plants. And that's because you're poisoned to everybody. So they're, they're not um, huge energy production. They, they are still, though, always still splitting the atom into the environment. So that was the, uh, that's an old design they're talking about. It's being repurposed, I guess. It was an open pool, so the atoms are splitting in the open environment and released out those skinny, tall stacks. Canadian Goldstein, who always seems to be some kind of weird, degenerate scumbag of, he up in Ontario, <coughs> the Lori, Mr. Lori Goldstein. We've covered him a lot over the years, man. He's 100% degenerate. He's just another nuclear crank, but he's actually a degenerate lawyer, too. N nuclear power, natural gas, essential to cutting greenhouse gases. But again, greenhouse gases are nuclear emissions. And Canada was captured by the nuclear industries in the 70s, and now we've been destroyed by it. Nuclear power, which burns without emitting greenhouse gases or air pollution. Uh, first off, that's all it releases is air pollution and greenhouse gases. And nuclear power plants can't exist without two external power plants like gas, coal, and oil. Canada and Germany. Germany. Why would he bring Germany up? That nuclear power. Germany's getting rid of nuclear power. They're down from 36 reactors to three, for goodness sakes. Germany didn't say that. <coughs> Lori Goldstein did. Which is typical of Goldstein in Ontario. The U.S. military is still missing six nuclear weapons. They had 32 nuclear accidents during the Cold War alone. Nuclear industry is such a scumbag, eh? Uh, UK set target to pass maritime laws for nuclear ships. Uh, now, just because they passed a law for nuclear ships don't mean more nuclear ships are going to get built. That like what they're, they're just covering all bases, right? A few will, but that'll be it. The North Atlantic is is the wrong spot to have nuclear ships, folks. And then the UK Department of Transport, which is as useful as a thumbtack when you're sitting down, has set a target date of twenty second November to to pass. Uh, the Merchant Shipping Nuclear Ships Regulations into Law. And really, there should be groups that would... A shipping seeks zero carbon. Like, you can't call nuclear zero carbon because, first off, it uses the most expensive material in human history. It uses all the precious metals that uh, they can get their hands on. And that the fuel is splitting atoms that will float around the planet for millions of years looking for victims to exterminate. So is there a growing interest? This isn't a, a fabricated interest, by the way. This is just the industry looking for a niche somewhere else where they, they're like a cockroach and they're just looking for a crevice to crawl into and this happens to be one of them. And this turns out, this story is from the people that plan on building the reactors for the ships. Oh, it's a 100% public relations stunt. Back to that story, Dana. Uh, this is just one of the accidents. What he said, there was no releases, but he picked up 
uh, thousands of uh, barrels of radiation. But hey, Dana, there's no releases. Yeah, they sent in something like 1,900 soldiers to clean it up, but there's no radiation, Dana. Okay, I'm just saying, man. UAE, this is despicable. Oh, I, it's, what else is new, Dana? High school toppers, high school students, they call them toppers in UAE, apparently. Visit the Bacharach nuclear energy plant, nuclear power plant. So students were brought, and they call it zero carbon emissions, 24-7 clean electricity. I actually had to go throw up in the toilet after I read that, Loy. So the Russians have their cannons within uh, 200 feet of the nuclear reactors. <laughs> Hard cases, man. RT visits the captured nuclear power plant. Yeah, 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 yeah. And told us nothing. The 6th Baton Summer University 2022. Nuclear security after Russia's invasion of Ukraine. I'm not really sure uh, what to make of this group, so I'll just give them a pass. Uh, well, apparently they're trying to have a conversation. But, like, I don't know what happened, so I'll just... I think they actually might be trying to do some good. Don't quote me, but it might be the rare occasion where there's a group of people trying to do something good. It's hard to imagine a university can do something good. And, like, we're only talking from experience, unfortunately. Three Tory cheers for the apocalypse after Liz Truss's nuclear pledge. Well, she's got to say she'll push the button, right? If you elect me prime minister, I'll nuke whoever you the nuclear lobbyist tells me to. If she doesn't say that, she can't get elected. And she'll do it, right? For, she means it, yeah. Make no mistake. Building nuclear power stations as cost of living crisis grows is stupid. Dr. Richard Dixon. Way to go, Dr. Richard Dixon. Kick ass. I'm taking no prisoners here. Approving another nuclear power station in the UK when we should be doing everything to reduce energy prices is surely a joke. This is the boundary of the nuclear license site. You can grow food all the way up to that sign, folks. <laughs> That's what they do, right? These places are surrounded by farms. Uh, the size will be it's surrounded by farms. Look it up. Like most nuclear power plants are surrounded by farms, right? Report at the weekend said that Boris Johnson had approved government funding. Boris got nothing to lose. He's already been fired. He just got to step down soon, right? I mean, he just lifted, with a shake of a hand, all restrictions on food from a nuclear wasteland. Mind you, three years before that, he lifted all restrictions on baby food from the nuclear wasteland with no restrictions, so no big surprise. He lifted it on the... It's, the these people are so evil. They, they're on a whole different level of evil. The average person thinks of evil as Ted Bundy and Bill Gates, but they got nothing on... Both of them are serial killers, certainly, but they got nothing on the nuclear industry. Nuclear industry is a genocide, omnicide machine. A thirty billion estimate cost for Sizewell C. Uh, Boris threw six billion at the uh, fire. I'm becoming caretaker prime minister. Promise not to make any big decisions. You know, like lifting all restrictions on food from a nuclear wasteland. Hey, don't mention that. But a leaked letter from the Treasury Minister confirmed that. Committing to size will see does exactly that, which is breaking his election promises. Yeah, I never heard of a politician breaking his election policies or promises before, Dana. 
no, actually, I've never heard of a politician fulfilling his election promises. The proposal for two reactors at the Suffolk Coast comes from the EDF France. Their other nuclear ventures are doing so badly that the government in France is having to buy back the 15% of the shares they don't already own. And that the only new reactor being built in France is Flamville. Uh, embarrassingly for EDF, it's running 11 years behind schedule. It's just, that's the nuclear industry. That's how that works. Give us all your money. And then get ready to give us four times more. It's supposed to cost 3.3 billion euros, uh, but the French court of audit puts it at nearly six times that. 18 billion, 11 years behind schedule. The reactor in Finland is running 12 years past schedule. It took 12 years longer to build it than they say, and four times the budget was originally allocate it. They should be happy that it even works. They still haven't got it up to full speed a year later, but the fact that they even got it started is a bit of a miracle. Anything EDF touches is highly unlikely that it's going to run, is what we know. The same reactors were used, designs for two reactors in China, and in 2018 they had to shut down one for more than a year because of a leak that EDF described as an imminent radiological threat to the site and the public. And China covered it up, right? We covered that. That's so pathetic, isn't it? <laughs> we covered all of these lies and propaganda and deceit and dishonest and journalists. Is there any other kind, Dana? Uh, unfortunately, no. Construction at Hinkley Point C is now running 10 years late. It doubled the budget they agreed on as 2016. And all of our electricity bills will be higher for the next 35 years because of a guaranteed levy to pay for the reactors. But inflation has gone four times now, right? So they're going to be able to adjust that to four times whatever the ludicrous number they end up with. Ironically, the Sea Green Offshore Wind Farm produced its first electricity this week. And when it's fully operational next year, the farm will produce a third of the supposed output of size we'll see for a tenth of the price. And of course, it won't create any of the embarrassing nuclear waste. It's got to be looked after for thousands of generations. For the next thousand generations. I like that, actually, for the next thousand generations, because that's actually downplaying it, but, I mean, it's more appropriate. Battle near a nuclear site or a treaty violation, it's war. War doesn't care about treaties or Geneva Conventions or anything else. From 1949... Uh, works or installations containing dangerous forces, namely dams, dikes, and nuclear electrical generation stations. Each nuclear power plant needs two separate electrical generation stations, large ones, like you see in the cities, dedicated to them for 100 years, shall not be made the object of attacks, even when these objects are military objectives, which is typical of the war. You go and you destroy all the infrastructure, the water, electricity, and everything else, right? Purdue Duke Energy to host a nuclear energy lecture series. Duke Energy, which is... Man, these people should be in jail. Like, Duke Energy has killed so many people. The first lecture, Clean Nuclear Energy, Past, Present, and Future. Like, this is absurdness to equate nuclear with clean energy. You can't call nuclear clean, my goodness. It's nothing but a disease factory, for God's sakes.
how small modular reactors could be used in the future to provide sustainable energy to places like a university. <laughs> That's their next lecture. <laughs> so they're not trying to come up with solutions, they're just trying to promote nuclear. Science City, uh, Pakistan or India, I can't remember off the top of my head. Science City holds talks, contests on nuclear energy. This is disgusting. Look at this. They got children, children, poster maker competitions for nuclear. Their parents should be arrested for child abuse. The teachers should be jailed for allowing that to happen. Children. The nuclear industry is disgusting, eh? They like children because children don't know any difference, eh? Nuclear energy, safe energy, in collaboration with the Nuclear Power Corporation of Kuki Batshit Lunatic India. Nuclear energy, safe energy, because they're talking to children, see? These are wicked people. 75 students and teachers from different educational institutions drawn pictures for the nuclear industry. All hail Hitler. Dr. Nilima Gerard, Director General of Science City, noted that nuclear energy is one of the most cost-effective energy sources and can help combat Issues related to climate change and greenhouse gas emissions. And these are uh, absurd lies. And go there and do that to children? That's probably the most cowardly thing you could probably do in a nuclear industry for promotions is use children. That's what scumbag politicians will do. They'll pick up children's. Real politicians don't have to do that, right? A new nuclear age is coming, and investors need to be prepared. He, this guy is a scumbag, Ryan Clarkson. He's a, he's a true degenerate piece of shit. He's with the stock market, right? Between the pandemic, inflation, invasion of Ukraine. You got that backwards. It's pandemic, invasion of Ukraine, which caused... Company, countries, NATO countries, United Nation countries put an embargo against Russia and create their own inflations, impoverishing their own countries. <clears throat> they didn't hurt Russia. Russia just sold somebody else. They hurt the most impoverished in their countries. Resulted in a massive global scramble to shore up electricity. It means going nuclear is going to be the best option. And if you're looking for sustainable fuel, climate friendly, too cheap to meter, clean, green, does your laundry, and interest in nuclear is quickly turned. Until a few years ago, nuclear would not be present, perhaps even welcomed, at the annual constipated party conferences by UN. And unlike, which this is from Australia, by the way, this is an Australian writer. The mere fact that we're talking about constipated party, which is cops uh, with nuclear in Egypt, is a miracle. Could have been almost unforeseeable just a few years ago. And switching to nuclear power will require significant coin. That's why the U.S. Department of Energy is forecasting a trillion dollar explosion. There's not going to be a trillion dollar explosion. It'll happen... If it actually happens, it'll be over decades. Uh, so for investors like yourself, you can afford to, you can't afford to ignore. And the reason I'm confident about the nuclear resurgence, which is absurd, in Japan, uh, the government is pushing heavily to revive the local nuclear industry. Again, you see all these straw men that they put in there to convince the unsuspecting, right? Japanese government looking into constructing nuclear plants. Make no mistake about it. Japan is committed to a nuclear future. This is absolutely not true. 
And with a third of its uranium supplies coming from Australia, I'll be taking a serious look at uranium stocks right now, he says. Right now. After all, Japan is one very big example <coughs> of a shift that is likely to take place around the world. It's the dawn of a new nuclear age. He's the co-author, co-editor of Stock Investors, who made a fortune in the last two days, and all the adrenaline of stealing a retired people's money, he wrote this article. Alert, Japan is considering development of a smaller, of a safer, smaller nuclear power plant, singling renewed emphasis on nuclear energy. So, like, the propaganda in the last 48 hours is just really something. Because when we, we do the 24-hour cycle, so, like, it's like, whoa, ho, ho, ho. they're getting ready to cut everybody's throat right now. Alert. Uh, contractors in UK are sought for a $10 billion fusion plant to help build a fusion plant. Again, this is really deceptive. This is over a very long period of time. If you took the same money and the people and the enthusiasm and the academics and solve, try to solve renewable storage, <coughs> we can get rid of gas, oil, coal, and nuclear within a few years. But they'll, they'll spend 50 years trying to crack that rather than come up with solutions. And they have the money, the, the brain power to actually crack that issue, right? And, f and figure it out. Well, it's the UK Atomic Energy Authority. Uh, th these people have never done nothing in their life, right? They've never accomplished anything in their life. They've never actually even decommissioned any, you know, they hope to decommission Donna Ray Nuke site in 315 years. Now, who's going to be around in 315 years to find out how accurate these degenerate lunatics actually are? Japan nuclear move return is a significant move. It's not. It, look, all they've all they done was they're going to pay for a study, a feasibility study of, of more nuclear power in Japan. There is no renaissance. What there is is the fleeching going on of uranium investors. And this is Australia again, look. So a very, very important debate and discussion of something that never happened. Israel jets breach Iran's airspace, which they're, they're looking for Iran to turn on their radars and stuff so they can mark them for bombing raids later. That's all that is, right? Nuclear energy trend set to accelerate. Sky News host Chris Kenny says nuclear energy is resurgent around the world. Expect that trend to accelerate, and there is no way Australia can continue to resist it. We'll never get to net zero emission without it. Australia is the perfect place for renewables. Right, got their own continent. <coughs> But the nuclear industry is savages down there. They'll kill everybody in Australia to get a single reactor. Teruchi ropes in nuclear scientists suggest ways to tackle pollution. Again, this is India, right? So nuclear scientists are considered superstars down there. And um, using nuclear scientists to solve other problems puts the nuclear scientists on another level, see? <coughs> it's just another way of promoting degenerate nuclear industry, isn't it? So we got two more short stories. We're going to play some videos from the day. And then I'm going to get a cup of tea and pretend that I'm dreaming. Chinese envoy asked U.S. and NATO to stop 
sending dirty bombs, which is like the 155 millimeters, or depleted uranium munitions, right? And uh, shoulder launch um, surface-to-air missiles, disposable ones. Well, they're like Ukraine's not a war; NATO is. Peace can never be achieved by imposing sanctions and pressure or sending weapons. Ah, uh, yeah. U.S. Navy wants to chop six months off the build time of its Columbia-class submarine. Uh, 580 feet long. So they want to cut it from 84 months to 78 months delivery. 84 by 12 is... Seven points. It's seven. So seven years to build something you can never use. You can't use the nuclear weapons. Right? The, your military is not one of your friends. Oh, you made it back, eh? Wow. <clears throat> All right, so we got some video from the day. I'll, if I don't explain it properly in the video, I'll address it after. So we got squeaking. I thought it was something rubbing in one of my tires, but I'm guessing it's the seal inside the axle. I got to find out tomorrow, but that's pretty depressing that that is happening. So we're looking for a squeak. And squeak, uh, squeak. I think I found it. There That's it is. It, there. it shows up on a, in the same spot. So we'll pull the wheel off. You can see the wheel in. Got a bit of a leak. I checked it and it's full of fluid because if it wasn't then that might be what the squeak was, right? Would be the axles because they're greased or they're in liquid all the time from right there. But uh, let's see how this plays out. Yeah, he's no problem. Hard to believe that filler won't move though. I gotta turn the torque up, I suppose. Yeah, I gotta put the torque on it. Hang on. So there's no wear on the inside of the tire. Because that's what I thought it might be. I thought, because it's. But when you spin it. You can still hear it. You can, probably can't hear it on your end, but you can hear something. I'm not seeing the wear. I'm not seeing a wear. I'm not seeing a buildup of extra dust on the calipers. I changed the brakes. Uh, I don't know what it was. What it was it? Six weeks ago or something? Five weeks? Four weeks ago? And the front brakes were okay, and I brought them back, and we bought something else, I can't remember. So that's what the squeaking is, is coming, as far as I can tell from here, right? And so, I'm going to jack up the other side. From the passenger side. I'm hearing the same thing. <laughs> there it is. On both sides. So does that mean the axle? <laughs> I wonder. Because there's two seals the on the, the axle, axle, right? On one on each side. They're like a hundred bucks. I'll bring it down to a guy tomorrow. 
Let's see if he's uh, able to get me a quick look at it. I've never heard it before, but you're hearing it going down the road. It's like it's like the single little spot where it'll do that. But it's both sides. I don't know. I never heard that I before. Don't know. Right? What the fuck do I know anyway? Oh. <laughs> uh, and so what I think it is like right by on both sides of the axle, the gears. There's the two bearings. They're like a hundred bucks for both of them. I think a hundred and twenty-five for both of them. And you got to also have seals after. They're like twenty-nine dollars each, right? I think that's what's going on because you know I'm I'm moving the trailer is fifteen hundred pounds and then you're putting fifteen hundred pounds on it, right? And then the boat you're looking at thirty five hundred pounds, and so that's a lot of uh, pressure on the axle, the rear axle, and because we do long hauls, you know, huge mileage over the years, we've got all these years punched in, and never had any any issues right but this year we got multiple issues one right serious issues too right one after another and you know we solved them right but we we went and um and we got we got we saved a lot of money by using amazon but you had to wait a long time in between i don't mind that though because that's you know we got no choice right and then problem solved and uh, and we discovered another uh, issue. We've solved that one. And the alignment, we got everything aligned. The alignment done it yesterday. And it's perfect going down the road. Just fantastic, folks. And I can still drag the boat for the next week or two. But you can hear it all the time now when you're driving down the road. And there's that squeak. It sounds like a tire rubbing, see? So it had me totally confused. I thought it would be something simple. I, d I don't know for sure what it is, but I got a guy tomorrow, uh, he's been doing this for 45 years. <clears throat> he should be, a now that we got something we can point at, he should be able to tell me exactly what it is. I watched six or seven videos on, on the day, this stuff trying to figure out uh, what the rear seals were. Because that's like where you're going to have to pull the whole shaft out of each side. I, I And I can feel it on one side. You can't hear it, but you can feel it, a little bit of grind. <clears throat> so I can get away with it for another while, but uh, obviously I'm not going to wait, right? I'm going to get a, get a diagnosis tomorrow and get the parts. And we got parts coming in for the boat, the uh, idler control valve. We'll Probably, sh I got no updates since Sunday. Sunday said the carrier picked it up from Amazon. Now, this is only a small, tiny package. This can go in the local mailbox, right? <coughs> and so they probably mailed it, and that's why there's no updates. Because it's, it's from Canada, not United States this time. United States has got to clear customs first, right? This is straight through the... Amazon, probably Ontario, I guess, down to the East Coast. So what I'm basically trying is saying is I found a problem. I'm, I'm all over it. <clears throat> I think I got a handle on it. And um, if the parts show up for the boat, it shouldn't stop me from launching the boat. It just means... You know, I gotta re I gotta resolve it. So the best thing to do is get the diagnosis, and have a game plan, and get the equipment, and and try to to resolve it. Right? If it's if it's the two bearings on both sides of the the axle, it's not too bad. They're like a hundred, hundred and twenty-five dollars, probably two hundred bucks all together for parts. Hundred bucks to get it in installed. Because my buddy, he can, he's got his own garage um, for forty something years down there, but he only does certain things. That's one of them, right? Anyway, my apologies for the end of the show. I gotta ramble a bit sometimes. That's part of the equation. We want to get out on the ocean, 
we want to get out on the ocean and um, and do some research, right? Because we got a mass die-off of species happening on the East Coast. So we got to put that on a trailer. Well, we got it on a trailer. And we got to tow it certain distances. I got to, you know, we got to take care of whatever. So let's close the poll down tonight. You got 53 votes, and 90% of the people said that the current uranium bull market is a scam. Obviously, the industry came in and spammed us. We're going to end the poll and play some music. Where am I to, man? There I am. So this was research we done from Vancouver to Alaska six years in a row. Over three to four to five months a year at a time on the ocean without coming home. It's beyond my skill set too, but I got to figure it out. Because <laughs> it, it's... If you can hear it going down the road, then that's an issue, right? You got to address it anyway. You got to find out whether it's dangerous or not. Because you're putting a lot of weight on the rear axle, see? And we've been doing this for years and years and years and got away with it. But hey, it's, it's come back to haunt us. Not too bad. We're still running. I'm still moving forward with plans to launch the boat. As soon as we get the idler control valve, we're going out looking for dead birds. We've got a mass die-off from Fukushima going on. And it's ongoing now for 11 years, right? So let's end the poll. We'll come in and um, we'll see everybody. Uh, we raised uh, 125 from Obsolete Optics, which is go obviously going to go towards parts. So that's a huge deal. That's a good kick uh, added right away. And uh, that's what I do, right? Is if you've got problems, you got to get on top of it and solve it. And sometimes they come in bunches. Sometimes, typically, problems will come in threes. Yeah, you can't WD-40 this one, unfortunately, because it's... We gotta find out what the problem is, right? Okay, we'll see everybody tomorrow. On, uh, so this is my Friday, AKA Thursday night, because I start on Sundays. So that's the end of the show. We'll see everybody on um, yeah, I got tr yeah, I gotta drain the differential fluke before you can change the seal. Yeah, that's right. And uh, the, 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 I, I open it up, and uh, it's still, I changed it last year, and, and then I changed it two years before that. I usually change it every second year, because I'm hauling the boat and trailers and the quads and everything, right? And so the fluid, as soon as I open up the, the screw, the fluid start coming out. It's still perfectly clear. It's still in beautiful shape, so I was really lucky with that. But the whole, that whole, I got to change that gasket too. And you got to, you got to let, that's where you let go of your shafts is in behind the, is the differential. And it's not hard. It's, you, you need certain gear, but it's not hard. You just got to get the parts and do it, right? Yeah, the trailer brakes don't work. <laughs> don't tell anybody. I'm sick of it. I'm just sick of fixing things. Yeah, it's not it's not the parking brake that's making a squeak. I'll check though, you never know, hey. We'll find out. Cause it's like a rubbing tire. It sounds like your tire is rubbing on something, see? But it's not, obviously, right? Yeah, I should do a show on water, shouldn't I? Yeah, good night, everybody. I'll see everybody on Sunday. 
I'm pretty burnt out. It's been a very long day. So much news, and then uh, it was really hot working on the truck. I sweat it. Unbelievable. I had to get two showers. After the first shower, five minutes later, I was still sweating heavily. I had to go back in, get another shower, change clothes again. <clears throat> so anybody wants to donate to the cause, you'll find two links at the bottom of the description. That's the only two ways you can donate. Or you can buy merchandise. That's the third link below. <clears throat> Uh, they're right at the bottom of the description. You'll see links to my PayPal and to my website, the Nuclear Proctologist. And I take almost any kind of credit card. If you put it in at the Nuclear Proctologist, this, the banking system that I use, they, they take just about any kind of card from anywhere on the planet. So you can always try. There's no harm trying. It also takes debit cards to... And I don't do it, it's directly to this banking, huge banking organization. They're completely legit, we've never had an issue. I'm just saying, because uh, if I don't, then nothing happens, right? God bless everybody, hugs for everybody, we'll see everybody on Sunday. If you made it this far, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. I get a cup of tea and me, I'll come by and read the comments in an hour or something. And uh, I'm so burnt out, uh, I'm probably a little lethargic tonight, I apologize. It's just a lot of work today, right? And tomorrow I'm going to have to work again, nothing I can do about it. We got to get ready because we're going to have the boat ready to go in the water soon. And that's a whole bunch of other <laughs> nightmares. We'll deal with them. <clears throat> that's what we do. We deal with it. And we just keep pushing forward. Because we have no way back. God bless everybody. Hugs for everybody. Have a great night. Great day and a great weekend. It's a great day to be alive. We'll see everybody on Sunday. Unless there's a breaking story. Hugs for everybody. We'll see everybody soon. Take care, folks.